This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Well, hello and welcome back to the Research Talks podcast here from Stockbox with Alan Green. Always a pleasure, Alan, never a chore to be chatting with you. How are things? Likewise, Mark, always a pleasure, never a chore. Well, uh, it's actually sunny at the moment. Um, oh, good. It's, it's, yeah, the, the, the weather here is really strange. It's uh, lashing down one, one minute and uh, you can literally walk from the house to the end of the garden. You'd see sunshine, uh, torrential rain, and then sunshine again before you got to the other end of the garden. That's it's just the UK, just... though, isn't it? Not, there's nothing strange. That's just the uniqueness, the quaintness of the UK weather system. <laughs> Our unique and quaint weather system at, at work, yeah. But it, 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 today, today it, it's been at the extreme end of that. So okay. it, it's really been crazy. Yeah, really crazy. Okay. Um, but, yeah, uh, one hopes that it might settle down, but uh, the forecast for the weekend is all pretty much the same. So, yeah. Mm. Um, oh, well. well, let's do some food for thought for the weekend, maybe. Um, we can Indeed. talk a little bit about uh, Vinance, BLC, uh, hashtag BTC, of course. Very good mm-hmm. hashtag there, BTC doing quite well. I'm not sure the price right now, but I know it was touching just under 60,000. So we can get a catch up on that because I know they raised recently and want to push on. KDNC as well, Cadence Minerals. Um, we'll get a catch up on what's going on with Cadence. And um, East Star Resources, who of course had some nice bits of news this week. So, Alan, who do you want to take first? Well, let's take it in that order, Mark. Let's okay. uh, let, let us start with Venans, uh, and of course, we've spoken about uh, Venans on a number of occasions, but um, with good reason because this company is just powering ahead um, it, on every level. Of course, uh, set up by by David uh, Lenegas, uh, well known to many investors. Uh, you know, David's a very careful and shrewd investor himself. Um, and, and of course, he runs the company along with Jeremy Edelman, who's uh, also uh, well versed in uh, in in running uh, Aquis and and AIM companies, and also you know a lot of experience in this particular area in uh, crypto- cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. But of course, um, we, we've seen iterations of similar companies beforehand. We saw we saw Argo Blockchain, of course, uh, one stage had a market capitalization of about one half billion. Um, and then came all the way back down to earth again when Bitcoin really crashed down to earth as well. But of course, we're now seeing this second wave of uh, of uh, interest in Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin rising through the roof again. So um, a lot of companies getting in and uh, and working with the cryptocurrency are seeing similar rises in the share price. And that's certainly been the case for Binance, uh, which since November last year, where the shares were trending at 2.8p, it's had a stellar first quarter i mean we've gone from 2.8 p all the way up to 13.25 p um the company's now got a market capitalization of 17 million but there have been a series of, of key milestones that really sort of marked the the next rise in the share price and uh they would set the company up to become a fully fledged bitcoin mining company focusing on bitcoin miners uh working primarily in labrador and canada um, and uh, scaling up uh, through investing into these third-party crypto miners, scaling up the uh, investment, um, and also uh, eventually pushing out into other cryptocurrencies uh, and operations in the in, in the uh, the DeFi and of course the big data space. Um, and David's aim is to provide a, a UK-listed platform to offer investors an entry into the cryptocurrency space. But probably with a better spread of risk than you might just see from the white knuckle side that Bitcoin tends to give most investors. So from June last year, from initially setting up a, a, a 100 new Bitcoin miners in Labrador, the the company has literally accelerated. December it it had completed 170 Bitcoin miners, uh, and of course in the run up to the the halving of bitcoin uh, which is going to be uh, be a a, a a key moment for bitcoin um we we're going to see the uh, the 900 available per day halved to 450 per day so that's 
that's uh, going to make a huge difference and really could provide drivers to see the price uh, motor on, uh, you know, well in excess of uh, uh, 60 to, to well, up, up to potentially $200,000 uh, per coin, which is quite astonishing way when you think where it started. Um, and, of course, the very fact that BlackRock and uh, um, other institutions are getting into the space now and offering ETFs in Bitcoin, you get a sense and, and, and a read on the market that it really has come of age. So um, in January, Venans were at the at the point where th th they were aiming to that that th th they were currently ma um, mining one Bitcoin every every twelve days or so. Um, in order to speed that up, they signed uh, a, a a deal uh, back in November last year with a company called Luxar to supercharge the platform uh, the, the platform or the operating platform's performance. Um, the the firmware that Luxor provide also increases operating margins and efficiencies. Um, and of course, uh, what the company have done uh, toward the end of January, they've deployed Luxor firmware into these mining fleets um, and they've boosted the overall speed of the, the mining process by some 10%, which is uh, a big jump. And of course, what that means is the net effect is that the the uh, sp the time taken to manufacture a Bitcoin um, falls further still. So, um, at the same time, uh, the company listed uh, or, uh, um, or, or, or took out a secondary listing in on the OTC market in the in the USA, and um, uh, significantly this month, or, or no, I say this month, of course, we're in March now. In February, the company applied to have its shares uh, eligible to be used uh, uh, through the electronic um, clearing system via the DTC or Depository trust company which effectively makes shares much easier for investors to trade on the otc markets so it gives us investors uh, a very quick and uh, quick and easy access to be able to uh, to uh, buy buy into the stock uh, the company's also just raised a further 447 million um and this was announced uh, when the pr the price had closed previously at 11.25p um the raise was announced the following day at 12p so of course that's just served to drive the price higher still, and we're seeing now the shares trading at thirteen point two five p. You know, uh, and the market is very much liking what uh, David and his team are, uh, are 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 offering the UK markets. So the money that's been raised is going to be used to uh, drive brand awareness in the USA and the OTCQB listing. Um, also provide a further. A boost to the uh, the Bitcoin mining fleet, uh, so there'll be there'll be further investment uh, to to speed that process up. Um, what David and the team are aiming to do eventually is to get to the point where they're where they're mining one Bitcoin per day, and obviously we're a while off of that from that at the moment. But once the halving process takes place, uh, and uh, David has more mining, uh, uh, more more mining teams at his disposal in Canada and elsewhere, then that could that could be uh, that that could uh, Come to fruition very quickly indeed. Um, the company is also examining the possibility of a Nasdaq listing too, and I think uh, if the company is able to achieve that, that will be a massive milestone for the business. It will be a real coming of age, I think. And uh, and you know, we're, here we are, here we are sitting here looking at Venans now. The company's got a market cap of just under seventeen million uh, sterling having achieved all this already, but you get a sense that we're still right at the start of this process and looking what Argo blockchain did the first time around, um, who would bet against uh, Venans from doing the same again this time around, particularly uh, given the fact that the company has absolutely no debt whatsoever. Indeed. And I mean, David Lenegas is a regular on Stockbox. He's um, definitely doing what he says he is going to do. Every time I talk to him, he's basically done yeah. it and wants to do more. So, yeah, he's very keen to get as many miners spinning as possible, isn't he, before that halving comes up. And the latest news there, as we talked about, the newest, or the latest, I should say, version of the miners. So um, yeah, they can you know, even run... Even quicker, Terra hashes, which is important, of course, when it gets doubly harder to to mine the Bitcoin. And um, yeah, they sat with them um, quite a number of Bitcoin already in their wallet. So um, I think uh, you know yeah, maybe he's timing this pretty well, given you know the sentiment in the market at the moment, given it's an election year. 
Um, and um, yeah, watch, watch, watch this space. Watch, watch what he does. I think watch um, if he puts his money where his mouth is, which he seems to be doing. And as you say, the share price didn't done very well, and it's up um, only uh, this, also this week as well. So it is. Well, well I think uh, I think David's read the market well. You know, as uh, you know, I, I know he's. Uh, I, I watch his interviews on Stockbox, but I think he's read the market well. Um, he's timed his entry right, and also the the moves he's making in the US with the OTC listing. Now look at the Nasdaq listing too, um, and the fact that every time he raises money, he's raising money at a premium to the uh, the closing price the previous day. Mm, you mm-hmm. know, markets and investors notice that they that they'll take note of that. And um, you know, it's a company; it's only going one way at the moment. And uh, and I think the fact that he's doing this with Nodes as well, he's just raising additional money. When the company gets to a certain point, raise some more money, uh, issue some more tri- shares into the market. No debt. You know, it's just uh, further money coming to the company through, through additional investors. It's the right way to drive this sort of business at this point in time. Indeed, indeed. Okay, well, thank you, Alan, for giving us the the, 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 the chat on finance there. So Cadence then, Cadence Minerals, of course, over in Brazil. I know you're very close to this company. Indeed. Well, uh, I've been working with uh, Cadence for some years. Uh, uh, obviously, I know uh, Kieran Mazzari well, uh, the chief executive and, uh, and and the rest of the board. Um, but uh, uh, certainly, um, Andrew Suckling, the uh, chairman, and uh, and uh, David Lendergasser, uh, well acquainted. And David was actually involved with Cadence Minerals um, right at the outset with the Sonora Lithium project. So he's uh, he he also is very familiar with the company too. And I noticed a lot of. Uh, uh, the social media posts that Cadence publish uh, is that they will also share those and retweet those. So he's very much behind the the company and and, and the direction uh, it, it, it's heading into. But um, I, I think uh, it's important to understand just where Cadence are right now, because along with uh, uh, many other mining companies, including in fact Eastar, who've also uh, the share prices also sort of encounter some, uh, should we say, challenging markets. Um, the Cadence share price is now trading at uh, you know uh, at year lows uh, just off. Uh, well, the 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 year low is four point one five p. We're currently at four point four two p, having been as high as fourteen point eight p. And a few years ago, of course, the company raised uh, several million pounds at uh, at twenty p, and that was uh, very much oversubscribed that uh, that particular uh, raise. So we're here with a market capitalization of just 8 million quid, which frankly is completely absurd. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, the company uh, has a range of investments. Uh, this includes the Sonora Lithium project, where they have a, a, a small residual investment in the Mexilit and Megalit concessions. And there are some issues there with the Mexican government, which are uh, being resolved. They've, they've hired a, a law firm to... To, to look at the situation there and to conduct negotiations with the Mexican government. So 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 we'll see an outcome from that at some point. Um, the company also has a stake in European Metals Holdings. European Metals Holdings uh, is the owner and operator of the Sinovec lithium and tin project. It's from the uh, it, it's on the Czech German border. And this uh, the the constant the lithium concentrate that's being produced is of the highest quality. And there are plans to uh, uh, build a battery factory near to the project. Um, and of course, uh, uh, the, the bulk ore will then go straight to the factory for processing and uh, uh, for, uh, to, to, to go straight into the lithium batteries. Um, so, so that's the sign of it lithium project um, at European Metals Holdings. The company also has a stake in uh, uh, Evergreen Lithium, which is a an ASX list, uh, listed company in Australia. Um, Cadence is the biggest single shareholder in the company. Um, it has ha, has about eight uh, percent of the business there, and uh, the company uh, the, the company is developing uh, the uh, Bino Lithium Project and the Kenyan Lithium Project. These are close to the core lithium assets, uh, 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 or, or the asset they're run by Core Lithium, which has uh, many million tons of um, uh, lithium uh, um, uh, in the ground and. Um, uh, the, there are great expectations that Evergreen will do the same as as the company progresses the project and uh, proves up the the asset. Um, but Cadence's primary asset, the one that really is the uh, the, the, the flagship project, is the uh, Amapa Iron Ore project in Brazil. Um, now, this was uh, Amapa is uh, in the state of Amapa in northeastern Brazil. 
um, and it consists of a huge iron ore mine, uh, a railway that runs for about 130 kilometers, and a port at uh, Santana, the port of Santana. Um, and the, the uh, this asset was originally owned by Anglo American back in 2012. The company then valued the Mapper asset at $600 million on the books, was then bought by, by Cluffs. And then there was a collapse at the port and also a collapse in the iron ore price, uh, which saw the uh, mine go into receivership. Um, however, with the improvement in the iron ore price uh, in, in, uh, the, uh, in 2019, Cadence uh, came to an arrangement with the, uh, with the uh, local uh, government in, uh, or the regional government in the Mapper to buy the assets out of administration. Um, and they've done so um, uh, at, at, to, to the point where they currently have invested at this point uh, some $12 million. Um, they now own a 32% stake in the project. They've settled uh, with the banks or the banks have received settlements uh, from the, the asset. The, uh, the mineral resource estimate has been materially increased by about 30% uh, on top of the initial estimate. The, uh, the local company, Dev, has uh, uh, invested uh, or used the, uh, the, the investments that's come in to reinvest into restructuring the port. Um, the company has also shipped tailings that have been sitting at the port waiting for shipping. They've shipped tailings. They've earned money from those. And the mine is currently set to undergo the final uh, definitive feasibility study. And Cadence announced uh, uh, back in October last year that they'd uh, signed a memorandum of understanding with Sonoma, a Chinese uh, company, um, to uh, complete the DFS. Um, and on completion of the DFS, to submit a fixed price engineering procurement or construction contract for a mapper um, to, uh, and this would be funded by Sonoma all the way through. And of course, uh, in, in, as a result of that, they would then have uh, the opportunity to, to, uh, to buy or, and of course, uh, um, uh, be shareholders in the project. But um, in order to put this together, a tremendous amount of work went into this over the prior year. So we're now seeing uh, seeing everything fall into place for a mapper, um, and I think once the uh, once that process is complete, then we'll see various licenses issued towards the end of this year. Um, and uh, once the DFS is complete, then licenses will be issued, uh, enabling the company to to uh, get the parts of the mine that need rebuilding rebuilt and get basically get things back on track uh, with a view to. Uh, possibly restarting uh, production at the mine uh, in 2025 um, uh, uh, at, at some point. So once that happens, then of course the the value of a map will rocket tremendously. Um, now, Cadence currently, you think, with all those assets under its, its belt, will be trading with a market capitalization of between uh, 50 to 100 million. But of course, in this market, not a bit of it. Cadence currently trades on a market capitalization of just 8 million. And this was um, picked up by um, the investment house uh, Edison. And Edison have, uh, have uh, uh, been uh, currently, well, that, that, they've, that they've looked at uh, the, uh, the assets, they've looked at the mapper, and they've, uh, undertaken, uh, they've undertaken some research into Cadence's other assets. And they, they announced uh, um, at the end of last year that uh, they believe the company remains fundamentally mispriced and the market hasn't simply hasn't recognized the value of its unlisted assets. Um, it believes that um, a mapper alone, without any of the other assets uh, included, is worth 23.9p. Now, remember, the entire valuation of Cadence is currently trading just 8p, which is uh, uh, just 4.4p, which is crazy. So, um, the, the memorandum of, of understanding with Sonoma to provide the DFS and the uh, engineering procurement and construction contract for the mine restart um, gives it that valuation. So, so you then uh, add the other assets in, uh, in, in into the mix there, and you're probably looking at a share price uh, or what, what should be a share price of uh, north of 40p, which is 10 times where we are now. So. Um, at some stage, that valuation gap will be addressed. Um, and I know 
uh, a lot of investors are wishing things would move faster, but the recommissioning process for a mine of this scale, and it is huge. If you go to the Cadence website and look at the look at the pictures, there's also a video flying around on social media that Cadence put out uh, a short while ago, which gives you a drone flyover of the mine and also the port as well. Take a look at that. That'll give you some idea of the sheer scale of this asset. So um, at some point, this valuation gap will be closed and uh, we'll see the share price rocket. But um, for now, for me, it's an absolute slam dunk investment. Well, I know, yeah, and I've spoken to Kieran a few times and you've just articulated the investment case, you know, very well there. Um, there is so much more to sort of than meets the, the eye originally at, uh, at Cadence. And then, you know, but then again, I don't even think the the main project really meets the eye. You know, you can't really grasp, I think, that the scale of what they've got over there. Um, yeah. But it will come. It'll come. I mean, um, maybe it takes a catalyst. Maybe it takes, you know, a bit more time for them to get. To, is it is permits they're waiting for? Is it I, I, or plant to, to, so they can actually get? Um, uh, well, they, they're uh, Sonoma need to com- complete the DFS, the definitive feasibility study. Once that's completed, then the the permits to to to, uh, re- to, to yeah to to complete the reconstruction yeah. of the mine yeah, and basically restart the mine uh, Base, will, yeah. will be issued and. The, those the thing is this is Sonoma is humongous. It's a huge company. You know when those boys get in there, they won't hang around. You know once that once those permits are issued, um, you know they'll be in there. They'll get that. Uh, they'll, they'll get what's rebuilt, re, uh, put back together. But also a lot of the infrastructure is perfectly serviceable. They can use a lot of what's there already. So it's not a complete rebuild from scratch because the infrastructure is already there. They've just got to beef up some of the old machinery and uh, and reconstruct the bits that need reconstructing. So it won't take that long. So it's quite conceivable that uh, in 2025, a mapper, you, you know, that railway line could be rumbling, you know, with huge trucks of, of ore going to port to be shipped out and obviously generate uh, millions of pounds. And at that point, you know, Cadence is going to be that 32.6% of the company is going to be worth an awful lot of money. Indeed, um, and, and it'll happen quickly, won't it? As well, because you've got the DFS this, you know, coming this this year, and then you've got yeah. once that's done, as you said the permits can be applied for and, and hopefully granted fairly swiftly to get the construction going. You're going to see things happen quite swiftly. You're going to see things happen very quickly. And I mean, I, I know we've spoken about uh, Premier Afghan every week, but uh, you know, w- when a mine finally comes together and things start to move, you know, that's when you see real action and and a lot of liquidity in the share price and. We're not that far away from that with Cadence. You know, we're really very close indeed. So I th- this is going to be a seminal year for the company, no doubt about it. Indeed. Well, thank you, Alan. Let's finish off with East Star Resources then. Another another company that um, I really do think, not investment advice, obviously, but I really like Alex Walker. I really like what they've got going on in Kazakhstan there. Um, I don't know if you caught my last interview that was... Let me correct that. Um, hang on. When the, no, because that's going out today. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> no, but that's okay. That's okay because this will go out at the weekend, so I can say that. I'll edit okay. it if it doesn't. Anyway, so I'll just yeah. Um, okay, I'll just okay, anyway. Yeah, I don't know if you caught my last interview, but um, in theory, they could be having three active um, programs this year. So setting up for a very active year at East Star. Well, they are, and I mean, East Star Resources, uh, and you know, uh, uh, Alex is a, is a great guy, a very professional operator, you know, mm. um, and, and I think, I, and I think that's pro- it's that professionalism that uh, you know put them put them in the sights of BHP, which is why they've that the, they've been adopted for the export program, why BHP have have put the money in. So, uh, and and they've had such a seminal year. And I'm looking at the share price and thinking, you know, okay, so it is moving up. You know, we've seen those little bumps and possibly at 1.5p, the shares are sitting on that higher low now, you know, preparing to go higher. So from a charting standpoint, I think it's looking quite attractive. But really what's happened, it, it, so, so if we look, at the, we, we look at the asset, I mean, Kazakhstan is just this vast piece of territory. It's the size of Europe um, and it's a mineral powerhouse who... Uh, we uh, new mineral laws were established there by the new government a short while ago, in line with with Western mining coding, low operating costs, and you've got all the big boys there already. You've got Glencore, Rio Tinto, Fortescue, all active miners in the country, and of course BHP as well. Um, and there are hundreds of brownfield brownfield resource drilling opportunities there. 
um, and of course uh, a raft of historical data from previous uh, uh, previous uh, mining uh, um, activities there. Um, so uh, East Star's got three primary projects. It's got the Copper Link and Z project in Vancouver, which is in the Rudne uh, Altai VMS belt. That's the volcanic uh, massive sulfide belt, of course. Um, and there's a, a, an asset reading there already. You've got 19.2 million tons, 1.4 to 1.9% copper equivalent, four drill ready targets. You've then got a, a rare earth asset as well at the Telerik deposit, an uncompliant resource of just under 20,000 uh, tons of total rare earth oxide, backed by historical data and drill results undertaken in 2022. Um, and then, of course, uh, there are organic gold licenses. Uh, there um, at the at Mintus and Dalney prospects, um, and there's a there's a there's a there's a strike zone of some ten kilometers there that's had that has demonstrated gold um, and economic grades coming out of the ground, um, and really again uh, you, you know a lot of this has taken place uh, uh, since um, since September last year, uh, a lot of progress raised five hundred forty thousand in October to advance the. VMS licenses at the one and a half p. So one and a half p is very much a benchmark level for the company. Um, and uh, also Alex Walker and uh, uh, the, the, a lot of the board sort of participated in that raise, which is always always good to see. And then I think uh, you know there was work undertaken uh, and uh, and results from uh, the projects over the winter months. But January really was a seminal month for the company when. It announced that five hundred thousand pound or five hundred thousand dollar grant from Billiton. Of course, this is uh, this is all part of Billiton's export program, which works with uh, small resource companies to help uh, to help identify um, and exploit uh, mining projects that um, you know companies at that level might not otherwise have the opportunity opportunity to exploit. Um, and and part of the deal there was. Uh, uh, it's a, it was a grant, of course, it's non diluted to existing shareholders. Uh, of uh, and a BHP approved Chris Van Wyck, uh, who's developed a, a porphyry strategy with uh, Eastar to join the board as a non exec director. And of course, that's that's key when you've got an approved person in there working with you, that's just the first step because then it opens up a raft of other opportunities. Um, so we, we then had sort of good progress during February, but um, again, the last two, well, this week, in fact, um, the last few days in February have been huge because we've seen the um, the Porphyry exploration license uh, awarded to uh, um, uh, to East Star Minerals uh, under this uh, under the Explore uh, uh, um, uh, uh, license arrangement with Billiton, and this is a silica lithocat, cap, the Iagaz project, which is some. 80 kilometers north of the Actagai um, open copper pit mine, which has has you know, some vast tonnage, tonnage, two and a half billion tons at 0.39% copper. Um, also through this program, they're generating a number of regional targets through this export program, which is focused on a, 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 a an anomaly called the Balkashilai magmatic arc, uh, which contains that uh, Actagai. Uh, assets uh, that I've already described, 2.5 billion tons, and also the Coonrad asset, which is six and 650 million tons at 0.59% copper. So, so these are all assets that will be developed and worked on and uh, overseen by, by Chris Van Wyck, who's key to this. Um, then to further drive the, the process, the company announced a joint venture with uh, with UK-listed GetTech, uh, G-E, that's G-E-T-E-C-H, um, headed up by Richard Bennett, who um, who uh, uh, I know through um, some of our work in Brighton here, and Richard is a very clever fella, um, and he has uh, his company Getech are world leaders in exploiting and identifying subsurface resources. So they work with a lot of mining companies, um, and indeed um, the 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 work that uh, they they will be doing together. Uh, their joint venture company that uh, Eastar have set up a sub subsidiary to work with GetTech to identify sediment hosted copper um, uh, opportunities in Kazakhstan. Um, why is that important? Because sediment hosted copper accounts for some 20% of global copper production. And obviously, with the range of assets that are potentially on offer at um, uh, or within Kazakhstan, 
and of course the joint venture with with Billiton. I think this joint venture with GetTech um, is hugely important and significant. At some point, that will be recognised, and the progress that these assets will will uh, provide drivers for the share price. So I think for now, uh, Alex and the team are just setting their stall out for the year. But I think we're going to see an awful lot of progress at a great rate of knots. And uh, I think one and a half P will be consigned to history before too long. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to following the developments. I mean, they want to get active spring, spring, don't they? Around um, sort of end of, end of April, um, and they've yeah. got that great backing, as we said there. The eight, half a million from BHP. Oh, I say, it's, you know, it's a grant. It's a grant. I wouldn't say they've got a backing, but you know, it's 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 money there to go and a decent amount of money it's, it's, to go and explore. It's a grant, yeah. 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 Um, and then, yeah, of course, it, as well as the, the, the partnership there with with uh, with G Tech um, to search for sediment, sedimentary hosted um, copper as well. And then, of course, you go back to Vacuba and the and the VMS. So um, yeah. there's, there's there's lots of things that could be going on. Um, and as you said, the three, hopefully, all being well, three programs this year. Um, but certainly, certainly two to start in in short order. So it could be well, a very we'll... interesting time to follow them. Indeed. Well, I think also that that BHB grant, you know, the uh, and bringing Chris Van Wyck in as well, you know, it's given them a a real opportunity. That looking at this uh, this uh, Balkashil and magmatic arc, you know, they've got that they're they're looking for a series of regional targets through there. So so whilst they're they're they're, they're on this uh, at the Iagas project with this silica life cap to start with, there are a number of other targets they'll be looking at, and um, I'm sure we'll be hearing about those. Um, yeah, I mean, end of April. That's that's mm. six weeks away, really, isn't it? So you know, it's it's uh, it's it's not not far at all. So you know, exactly. I, I think the drivers for the share price and for shareholders will be coming out very shortly. And in such a prolific area as well, you know, again, I think perhaps Kazakhstan people maybe dismiss it, think it's not a great jurisdiction or not easy to operate in. Um, but you know. It comes back to Alex as well. You know, a great CEO moved his entire family over there so he can focus on building this company here. And they are surrounded by majors with infrastructure and processing facilities all nearby. So I, I do think it's a, it's an off the radar one. Uh, it's one of mine. I would actually say it's one of my ones to watch this year. I would actually go and say that's one of my one of my picks yeah, for this yeah. year. Yeah. Well, well, I think again, you know, you, you look at the market capitalization, three point three million. Yeah. Million, that's absolutely nothing at all. And I think the. For a company that small to be having these sort of conversations and you know being able to mm. uh, secure the, secure grants from majors like BHB and you know put joint ventures together with the likes of GE Tech, uh, you know Indeed. that's a, that's a huge feather in Alex's cap, and I think it's it speaks volumes for the quality of the management and also you know how Alex and these star resources are, are are viewed within the industry. That's a you know mm. that's a that's very much a litmus, litmus test for me, which uh, he's. He and the company have passed with flying colours. Yeah. Great stuff. Well, thank you very much, Alan. Have a pleasant weekend and um, let's catch up again next week. Thanks, Mark. Have a great weekend. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programmes at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.